Well, it seems like history should be useful, right? So right. How, how, do, how do we get into the world in which we live today? And that's what this book's all about. How did our work become so insecure, and what can we do about it? So the, the question that I have is, you talk about, and it's right in the title, the, the American dream. That's right. Do you think the American, and we've debated this for a very long time, is the American dream challenged? Is the American dream over? Is the American dream dead? What do you think? I think that we're at this wonderful crossroads. We have a chance to reclaim the American dream. You know, the old American dream, going back to Jefferson, was autonomy and independence, self-determination. Isn't that what the gig economy is supposed to be all about? That's what it's supposed to all be all about, but yet But it you say it isn't. Well, no, I say that it could be. I say that it is for some people, and for we need to figure out ways to make that actually a reality. Okay, and how do we do that? Uh, we need to figure out ways to create a baseline level of support so that independent workers can make sure they get paid, to make sure that they have you know, good benefits and all the like. But it is this amazing moment uh, in our history. Is there any gig economy company or, or, or company like an Uber style <laughs> company Uber. <laughs> <clears throat> that you think is doing it right? So Uber is the waste product of the service economy. You know, it is something that exists uh, an alternative to the terrible jobs slinging coffee. Now, there are uh, alternatives that do work. There's Upwork, for instance, which has enabled lots of highly skilled... Upwork's a, a freelance website, it's right? It's a freelance website where they have been able to... People work remotely they all around the world. They get paid pretty well. They do all kinds of stuff. And so there are alternatives like that. Can I, can I just ask, though, uh, this is an evolution, just like we've seen other evolutions and revolutions before. That's right. There are now the workers who are the gig workers who are kind of pushing back and demanding more, too. We saw this in the Industrial Revolution. Are you going to see it in the gig economy, too? So I write a lot about that in the book. So it took us 100 years to make the Industrial Revolution work for regular Americans. So let's not take 100 years in doing this. Let's make sure that the independent workforce gets its benefits from all this as well. Are you a believer that these gig economy jobs that historically are contract jobs need to come with what might be described as some of the full-time uh, benefits mm -hmm. that historically have been uh, bequeathed upon, I don't want to say bequeathed, earned by employees. Well, I think there's a pretty conservative path that we can take here, which is take the 401k as a model and try to apply that to all these independent jobs. So that as we move from gig to gig, from job to job, we're able to bring along all those benefits. You take it with you. In take it with words, you. They encourage you to sign up, but it, it, it becomes movable. You take it wherever you go. And that's not a radical But there has been a legal challenge to this idea of a gig economy and to sure. suggest that an Uber or you name the company is actually, you are technically, you really should be considered the employee and all the benefits that it should accrue to you. What do you think about that? Uh, so I think all those kinds of laws came out of a particular moment in history where this is, the economy was based around an employer-employee relationship in an industrial economy and offices and factories. And we're not working that way anymore. So 94% of net new jobs since 2005 are in this alternative work arrangement kind of situation. Would it work if you were forced, if Uber and other companies were forced to take these contract employees and make them actual employees? It, it probably wouldn't work, certainly not as well for the investors in those companies. Uh, so I think one of the questions is, can we make it work? But what's the, what does it mean to make something work? If it's profitable but making people suffer... Well, it's not profitable then now it's a, in a lot of these instances. It, if you it, were suddenly to put more costs on them, my, my guess is some of this would go away. They would probably go away. But that's part of what capitalism's all about, right? But let right. me ask you, this, this, uh, Becky's getting, I think, to the central question of the gig economy. That's right. So many of these gig companies... A, are already losing money, so they're, they're being subsidized effectively by Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you, have not, you yeah. have not seen wage growth across the board at all. In fact, you could argue that these gig, gig companies which don't make money have held down wages across the board. Well, I think the people who are really holding down wages are the Walmarts and the Starbucks and the people, who, the giant retail and service companies that actually employ many more Americans. You know, less than 1% of the workforce is working for Uber and other kinds of digital uh, companies. So, you know, this is a space that uh, you know, people often point to Uber as the problem when it's really dominoes, uh, when it's really these other kinds of places where people are What do you think employment paid. looks like five, ten years from now? Uh, I think a lot of people are going to be working in this space, and they need to figure out a way to get together and make sure we have policies that support And them. how do you think about the world of robotics, AI, and the potential for that to, and machine learning to effectively take so many of these jobs. Yeah, just like every other kind of technology, it's neutral. Uh, how neutral. We, neutral. How do we decide to use technology? Technology solves for business problems, and those business problems uh, can perhaps, you know, steer us in the direction of everybody being part of it right. or excluding lots of people. Okay. Lewis, uh, 
You're a full-time employee. I'm a right? full-time employee, <laughs> although 70% of professors are adjuncts. Adjuncts. And you probably, do you have additional work? I bet you have some side hustles. I have some side gigs. I write See, books sometimes. The, books. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, the book uh, called uh, Temp, How American Work, American Business, and the American Dream Became Temporary. Thank you for joining us. Oh, my pleasure.